Hello again, uh, here we are to continue talking about our slideshow and we've been making some pretty good progress. Um, in the last video, we you know, uh, used uh, query selector and query selector all to, uh, to get the elements in our slideshow. We got the images, we got the slides inner, and we counted the images so we know how many there are. And that's the information that we need to actually run the slideshow, right? So here's our code so far. It's not too bad. There's not a lot of code there. Um, here's the JavaScript that we're working on. We've got a single function, right? And it's got three variables inside. And I, I use the word constant here because we're not going to reassign to these variables. So just a quick reminder on that. Like at no point am I going to say, you know, slides equals some new thing, right? You know, um, so that's why I'm using constant. If I had, you know, been planning to reassign to this, I could use let here or var, okay? Okay, great. So we've got our slides and we've got our um, our images. So now how are we going to run our slideshow, okay? I'm going to define a variable now that will change value, okay? So I'm going to define it with the keyword let and I'll call it um, index and I'll give it a value of zero, okay? And this will represent which slide in the images list that we're going to see, okay? And so every time index gets, you know, greater than three, then we'll set it back to zero and we'll start over again. So our goal here is every time we change a slide, we'll add one to this and the value will change. And then we'll check it. And if it becomes greater than the number of slides or, you know, equal to the number of slides, we'll set it back to zero again, okay? And that won't actually show the slides. It'll just keep track of what slide we're on. And then to show the slide, we'll use the number to set the position of the slide with translate 3D, okay? So by changing the value here to, you know, 1200 or the width of the slide times the, um, times the, uh, um, the, the index, then we'll be able to, um, to slide the whole thing one slide width to the left, right? Okay, so let's, uh, let's get this started and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about how we're going we're gonna to make this work. There's a couple details we need to look at, but let's just kind of get the basic mechanism in here, right? So what we're going to use um, to run the slideshow is we're going to use this, uh, this set interval. Okay, so there's two timer functions, right? There's, there's set interval and there's set timeout, okay? Set interval um, is an interval. It happens periodically over and over again forever, okay? Set timeout is a one-time event. So you give it a time and then it, um, you know, it runs when the time is up. It runs some code for you and then it's done. It only happens once and then it's forgotten about. Set interval, on the other hand, um, it has a time assigned to it. And then when the time is up, it runs the code at the interval and then it waits that interval again and then runs the code again. Okay. We want to do this because we want to periodically show our slides um, over and over again. We want them to run forever, right? So we'll use set interval. And set interval is a function, so we call it with the parentheses, and it takes two parameters. The first parameter is a callback, and the second parameter is the time in milliseconds. Okay? So uh, milliseconds are a thousand to a second. So if you put a thousand here, the slides will take, you know, each or each call to this callback would be in, you know, one second, right? So let's make this uh, two seconds, right? And so what's a callback? Well, a callback is a function that you give to another function to execute later on. You know, in other words, you're giving them a block of code that, and you're kind of saying like, hey, why don't you call this block of code later or sometime in the future or when you're done doing whatever you're doing, right? Um, we often use this with um, asynchronous action. So if you make a call to the internet, we don't know when the internet's going to get back to us. You know, we've got to talk to a server. It's got to look up some information in a database. And then when it finds all that, it can call us back with the callback, right? Um, in our case with the interval, we want to wait for the 2000 milliseconds to complete. And then we want to run the code here. So we're going to give it this, this callback function, right? So I'm going to write a function in here 
And you'll notice I wrote this the same way that I wrote the function up here. I wrote function, I use the parentheses and the curly brackets, right? Um, but here I didn't put a name, and you can actually put a name in here, um, slides function or something, right? You could you can actually put a name in there. Um, but I'm going to leave that off. This is called an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name. So I'll just do it, you know, I'll say function, parentheses, curly brackets, and then I have a comma here for the second, the second parameter, right? So, you know, if we wrote this on one line, it would look like this. You know, parameter number one, comma, parameter number two, right? So um, I'm going to put a, a line return there so it'll be easier to read the code. And what do we want to do every time we, you know, the interval shows up? Right. So what I want to do is I want to say, you know, index plus equals one. OK, so we'll add one to index here. I'm, I'm assigning. Right. This is like add one to this variable. These won't be reassigned. So we declare them as constant. If we tried to reassign JavaScript, would give us an error saying you can't assign to a constant. A let, on the other hand, we can reassign to. OK. Um, Sometimes you see var. Um, var and let are a little bit different in how they work. Um, we prefer to use, uh, it's kind of better practice to use constant let over var. Um, so I'm using let here, okay? We'll get into that, the reasons why in another video maybe, but for right now, just let's, let's think about it that way that this is best practice, right? Um, so I'm going to say uh, index plus equals one. And now I have a problem because, you know, it could count Actually, let's even try it, right? I'll do a console log, and then we'll log the index here and see if this works, right? If I run my code here um, and wait two seconds, I can see it says one, two, three, four, and that would be all of my slides, but now it says five, six, you know, it'll keep going forever, right? So my interval is working, but it's actually counting beyond the, um, that you know, it's sort of out of bounds for this array or, or array like node list of, of slides, right? So, what I think I'll do here is I'll say, hey, you know, if, and I'm going to write an if statement. So, this is like a conditional block. It lets me, you know, look at something, look at an expression, and uh, make a decision based on that expression. So, I'm going to say if, and then I'll put the parentheses and the curly brackets, right? And if the, um, the expression within the parentheses evaluates to true, we'll run the code in the code block. So I'll say, hey, if uh, index equals, and I'm going to do the three equal signs, okay? So that's um, strong equals. It's like same type, same value, okay? And if this equals images.length, that means I've, you know, the number is four, and we've gone past the last index of our images, right? In which case, we'll set index equal to zero, okay? So uh, we'll do that, and then I'll refresh here, and uh, we'll wait two seconds there. Oops, wait, I, I took out the console log. Let me put that console log back in there. Let's say... Uh, uh, index, right? And then I'll refresh here and uh, it says one, two, three, four, oh, zero, right? One, two, three. So you can see I've got four slides. Zero, that's the first slide. One is the second slide. Two is the third slide. Three is the fourth slide. And now we go back to the first slide of zero again, okay? Okay, great. So that's working pretty good. So now how do we show the slides, right? Well, what we'll do is we'll do this. We'll say um, what we want to do is we want to essentially set this transform property. Okay, and when we change this, then it'll be applied in CSS. But we need to set this property inside of JavaScript. Okay, so let me copy this you know, the CSS version of this, right? And take a look at what it would look like in JavaScript. Okay, so that's what it looks like in CSS, right? And how does that look in JavaScript? Well, 
what we want to do is we want to apply this to slides inner. So slides inner, any element that you get here in JavaScript that represents a DOM element, it has a bunch of properties, right? When it comes to setting styles on that element, if you um, if you say slides inner dot style, or was it styles, right? Then you can hit the dot and it will give you, um, you can assign any of the um, built-in styles, right? Let me see here. Actually, maybe it's style without the, without the S, right? So I'm gonna say slides inner dot style dot transform. So this is getting me to this transform property. So I got the element, I say style, and this is the list of all the styles on the element. And then I say the name of the style that I want. And to assign it the value here that's on the other side of the, the colon in our regular style sheet, right? What we'll do is we'll say equal, and we always need to put a string here, okay? So I'm gonna borrow this. And actually, instead of the regular string, I'm going to use the back quote. Okay, so this is the character that's off to the left of the number one. And this is called a template string. And what I need to do is I need to combine the code here with some variables, right? In order to mix those variables in with the other string stuff, this template string makes it really easy. So what we want to do is we want to do this. We want to say translate 3D, but the value here for the X is going to change. So I'm going to use the dollar sign and the curly brackets. And what I want to do is I want to take the index and multiply it times 1,200. Now, astute observers will realize that if we wanted to do slideshows of different sizes, we wouldn't want to hard code this number in here. So we're going to come back to that and, um, and get that number from our images later, right? But we'll make that another step and then we can replace that, right? Maybe I should have done that first, but we'll just get the slideshow working now and then we'll come back and fix that, right? So this is the value here, but 1200 isn't good enough. We have a couple things to do. So one, we remember if you recall, we want the slides to go to the left so that the number has to be negative. So I'll put a minus in front of the 1200. If index is zero, zero times 1200 is zero. If index is one, one times negative 1200 is negative 1200. That's the first slide, right? Uh, or the second slide. If uh, index is two, then two times negative 1200 would be negative 2400. That would be the second or third slide, right? Um, and then we need one more thing. If you recall when we did this earlier, we had to put the units up here, right? Like PX. So we'll have to include that here. And it'll go outside. Like I want to generate the number here and then put the PX right afterwards without a space, right? So when this is calculated, like let's say index was, was you know, uh, three, three times negative 1200, would mean that the computer would calculate this as negative 3600 and then you'd have your px here and that would be the correct css style right so let's uh let's save this and see what happens right um and then well, there's still a few more things to do we're not quite done yet it's going to be a little more work to do so let's test it oh there's our second slide our wait Hmm, let me refresh that there. Was our second slide? Or was that the last slide? So wait, I got some problem. Oh, because I put the number three in there, right? I gotta put the I back in there, right? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so I, I was I forgot to change this back to what it was, right? So I'll, this has got to be I times negative twelve hundred, right? So oops, um so let's see. So there's uh the First slide. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I missing here? Well, let's let's debug it, right? So, I'm curious. Like, what is this value here, right? Let's uh, console log it. So let's say console log, and uh, i times negative twelve hundred, and then I'll get my inspector here and see where I've made a mistake there. Oh, it looks like I'm getting errors here every two seconds. So I got some problem. Oh, oh, because I did I, I'm 
like not thinking here. That should be index, right? Because we use the name index here, right? So all, all of you people that caught that before I did, good for you. Uh, let me refresh it now and see what happens, right? Oh, there's our second slide, uh, our third slide, fourth slide, and then hopefully it should go back to the first one. Okay, hey, so that's looking pretty good. So um, it's not animated yet, so we need to create some animation. Um, to create an animation, what we'll do is I'm going to go to the slide, um, to the slides inner rule in the style sheet here, and in this slides inner rule, I'm going to add a transition, right? And we're going to modify this later, but uh, I'm going to put a transition here, and this is going to determine how long it takes the slide to slide. Okay, so I'll do a thousand milliseconds, right? So any changes to the properties here will take 1,000 milliseconds to occur, okay, or for them to happen, right? So uh, let's try it now. So let's refresh again, and this time, oh, the slides slide across, right? So that's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe they're going a little too fast or a little too slow, and it's also possible that we want to control the speed that they slide. So we'll add that in the next video, and we'll also solve... Um, a couple other small problems here, right? Um, like, for example, the width of the slides, right? We want that to be set automatically, right? So anyway, thanks for watching, and um, yeah, any questions, please post them to the comments.